Thanks, Kyle. Um, pleasure to be on the show. So I'm uh, the managing partner at Arias Venture Partners. We're an early stage tech fund based out of India and focused on the Indian market. Uh, probably one of the hottest markets in India, um, you know, in, a, in all over the world uh, at the moment. And for the right reasons, I believe, large population, uh, lots of exciting things to do, lots of pain points and creating some new success stories. Uh, we've, have, uh, we've been investing in, you know, different areas uh, of uh, fintech, consumer marketplaces, brands, uh, uh, you know, social commerce, uh, even, uh, you know, cybersecurity, pre-fund and both post-fund. My name is Gary Yours. Saller and uh, I'm an investor. Uh, I work in artificial, with artificial intelligence companies and I've been doing it for over 30 years. I've had a successful IPO and um, really love how this whole digital transformation is changing the world. And I'm focusing on it, bring, making the world a bit better place. So we're looking at intergenerational teams, multicultural, regionally diverse. I'm looking at really cool companies that um, can make a dramatic impact on our lives. And I believe now is the best time that we've ever seen because we've now transformed to a different type of uh, society by having this beautiful online world and being extremely, extremely efficient. And I think each one of us can take advantage of that. Uh, my name is Erica Van. Uh, I'm an investor at Charles River Ventures. Um, we are a multi-stage firm, but really do focus on early stage. Um, in terms of you know where we like to spend our time, you know, we have different teams that focus on different things. So we have a consumer team, um, we have a biotech and healthcare team, and we have an enterprise uh, B2B team. Um, in terms of geo, um, our investors, we are spread across um, SF, uh, Palo Alto, Boston, and New York, um, but we also um, invest um, internationally very much as well. Um, and I personally am focused on enterprise uh, B2B companies um, at the early stage. So I think we are uh, sort of looking towards uh, a, a whole systemic upheaval, if I may call it. Uh, we have 1.5 million schools uh, in the country, the 260 million um, uh, you know, uh, children to be educated. It's no, it's no mean joke. And uh, we're looking at solutions in live tutoring. We're looking at um, solutions of all affordable uh, you know, tutoring applications that you can do for covering off all the after school. So all of that is got to come together on uh, a viable platform that consumers can access through mobiles or through their laptops. In fact, everyone's sort of upgrading their home Wi-Fi's and um, everyone's gearing to figure out and use the solution that best suits them. So I think that's where uh, we are. So we're eagerly looking at I would say billion dollar companies uh, coming out of solving these pain points and uh, nobody's going back in a hurry. In fact, the whole system is gonna be recast. Uh, I think it's gonna be a mix of physical and online and not just uh, physical anymore. Everyone's rethinking through how the dispensing of education is gonna be in the, in the, in, in the months and years ahead. Um, some contributing points I would like to make about remote tech, I invest in early stage had a few exits um, through some of my entities, one in VR tech, one in bi uh, biotech, the other in uh, construction tech. What I've seen from my own experience from investing early to later is, um, as long as there's good product market fit, the founding team is going to be able to adapt to you know, the market situation. And what I personally recently have really noticed is, um, for example, platforms that are like LinkedIn, they actually are transforming themselves at the fastest rate that I've been impressed with, uh, largely because I look at how they've been acquiring various startups. Um, I see the fact that us, with COVID, us being in this um, remote work arrangement, you know, and being able to figure out what are the best tools for working remotely. So I think one space that we've invested heavily in and we're excited about, it's it's an obvious one, but it's certainly taken, you know, different kind of twists and turns and has accelerated. E-commerce, for, exa for example, had been rising at a really strong rate, but the leaps and bounds that e-commerce has taken in COVID has been um, has been crazy. And so what does that mean? So the entire ecosystem within e-commerce that we've been looking at delivery. So deliver, um, you know, supply chain optimization, 
we're certainly looking at those spaces because um, the, the companies are have feel so much demand and all oh, my package arrived and complete or or whatnot. So delivery kind of logistics optimization um, uh, as well as identity management. Um, and, you know, you just see the fact that everyone's working remotely um, and you need to have a secure way to log in from home. So like remote devices, what that means from a security perspective. Um, those are kind of the, the places that we've been spending a lot of time in as, as those are kind of areas that we think are accelerated by COVID and will stick. There are certainly a lot of, you know, times where we spend time with, in a space where we think it's COVID specific, something that will thrive in COVID, but won't really thrive after. But I think when we've kind of done our research and had our conversations, those are the spaces where we're spending time where we think it's kind of like a long-term impact um, that will change the industry. If we look at it today, we're looking at artificial intelligence as really the new electricity, right? Some people have talked about it over the last few months, but really the changes that are taking place are similar to what happened in the beginning of the 20th century. So aging in place, we have a problem today, 46 million people with the age of 65 and above. How do we deliver great quality care? How do we give people peace of mind? And so how do we go down through with thermal detection to be able to tell to make it a safer place for folks? How do we enforce social distancing? So we have a company called IREX. IREX is already doing a, about $3 million in revenue. We have $100 million in the pipeline today with that company and it's a relatively new company. Because we're addressing a problem, we pivoted a bit, right? We were primarily in security. We pivoted over to the whole uh, COVID environment. And let me tell you, stadiums. How many stadiums are having uh, participants today? It's closed down. Well, they need to open up. Technologies like this will help. So anything that applies incredible artificial intelligence to be able to solve a problem that we, we all have the same problem. We're in, dominated by information. So systems that can help us to be able to make our lives better, smart, intelligent assistants are gonna really work. We're having a problem now with this infobesity and it's something that needs to be solved. I'm invested in those kind of technologies that make a difference. Uh, it's the rise of the influencers that finally VCs, investors, you know, my colleagues have recognized with the fact that we are all remote now. How do you get the attention as a startup, as a company of the audience? Um, so the thing that we tell our companies and the way that we think about investing is, um, really looking at the data, um, and how encouraging our portfolio companies for their own, you know, customers, as well as us, when we're looking in the market, we talk to a ton of customers and buyers. We're spending a lot of time talking to corporations, understanding their buying behaviors, right? Cause there's definitely going to be a lag when they realize they need something and when they actually go and make kind of that enterprise sale. So for us, like what we've been doing is listening to the data, talking to customers, um, you know, we learn from a lot of our portfolio companies, what, you know, from what their customers want. So, you know, really having even our early companies invest in like customer experience or kind of customer support um, to just get that information in the market. What I got to tell you is that if we focus on the negative, you're going to get negative stuff. Let's focus on the positive and look at where we can go. That's exactly what we did with Click Software. And it's mm -hmm. a story. So each one, I've been around a long time uh, and I have seen it, uh, many uh, upturns and downturns. I know one thing is let's look for the positive and figure out how we can all you know, be successful, help our companies grow and make some money to be able to share. How I look at my crystal ball is what I, you know, as a test or my friends joke testism is um, the thesis of AI online and offline. How I think about that and why I coined that such is the following. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities and we need this in the areas of service providers that eventually are going to come to your house. For me, I 100% believe it's in privacy because think about how many more users are now online versus before and using all these tools to work remotely, the concentration. And how do you govern this? So privacy as a service, privacy, um, you know, the um, privacy by design, you know, expert, you know, Anne Kabukian, um, she's amazing. You wish anyone who needs to look into that, a company needs to definitely start thinking about privacy and have it built in in the core tech 
into the culture and into the company plan. Otherwise, they're going to be fined heavily. 